Welcome to the Unity for Education talk. Um, it's going to be given by myself. I'm Will. Hi, nice to meet you all. Um, this is Casey and Dan from Noasis. Uh, we're going to be sharing the hour, and we're going to be uh, trying to basically give you uh, a take on what we do for education, uh, the kind of approaches that we take, uh, and then we're pretty much going to turn it over to you guys to give us some kind of feedback on what you do if you're involved with education, what you do to teach Unity, um, what your students expect from you as a tutor, and just really your, your take on, on what we've just talked about that we do. Um, so to kind of kick us off, um, my name's Will Goldstone. Um, I wrote Unity Game Development Essentials, uh, the first Unity book, uh, and I also run a website called unity3dstudent.com. Uh, um, so to really kind of get into it, um, the focus of my research has been really on the beginner side of things. So it's been the kind of game development for people who don't really start off with a programming background. So I myself came to Unity from uh, a background of graphic design and web design. I do a lot of HTML and CSS, Photoshop, all of that kind of thing. Um, so my focus has been to get people from that background to start game development from kind of zero knowledge um, uh, with a kind of focus on not losing new talent to a kind of uh, too steep a learning curve, shall we say. So what are the problems with that? Well, the problems that students often have are in the kind of things that we expect from them when we're teaching. So for example, we ask them to be original. We ask them to come up with a brand new game idea that no one's ever thought of. Or we ask them to come up with a piece of design that doesn't mimic anything um, in order to achieve a good grade. So with that comes creativity, another really subjective um, you know, term. And the other thing is confidence. And I think confidence is, is one of the things that a lot of people have uh, you know, a big struggle with when they're learning anything new. And when our students, or my students, um, come to game development, they are coming from a completely alien background. So they might be um, someone who's really used to HTML, um, but hasn't used any kind of more detailed programming language than that. Or they might even have just worked in Photoshop and not even thought about you know, any kind of procedural anything at all. So what we're doing is actually asking them to achieve something, a certain level of confidence in order to achieve a good grade, which is really quite a big challenge. So I, I thought about those kind of problems, uh, and I thought what the potential causes could be. And I thought, well, one of the things is me. I'm a tutor, and ultimately, they're getting their information from me and other sources, granted. Um, but ultimately, they're coming to me in order to help them learn in the correct way. So there's going to be a lot of different ways that people learn and a lot of different ways that people are more adept at learning certain things than others. And I thought, well, is it a problem with them? You know, are, are they being lazy? Uh, you know, are they not understanding properly? Are they, are they you know, taking a disciplined enough approach? I wasn't sure. And then I thought about, actually, it could be just a whole bunch of other stuff. And I started thinking through a big list of all the potential things that it could be from the school, the college, upbringing, interests, blah, 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 blah. All of these different things. And you know, the more I thought about it, the more things I added to that list. So the list you know, goes on. But when I looked at that list again, I thought that actually, a lot of these things are things that I face myself. You know, when I'm teaching, you know, I have to worry about class time, how much time I have with them. I have to worry about how much practical stuff versus how much theory I give. Um, I have to worry about the changing technology. Am I teaching them the right things? Is there an easier, you know, better way of doing things? So when we first picked up Unity, we were working with Director MX and working with Shockwave. And you know, it suddenly emerged that there was a much better way to do things, a much more intuitive way of game development that we could give to our students. So you know, we changed. And what I came to the conclusion was that you know, ultimately, we're all learners. Whether you're a student or a tutor, we're always learning. We're always picking up new things. And so I thought, well, if that's true, what is the difference? What's the difference between the way that I learn and the way that I'm expecting my pupils to learn? And I realized that when I looked at that list again, something really stuck out for me, and that's trial and error. Okay? So when I learn something, when I sit down to pick up a new skill, I will actually think, OK, well, I need to set myself a task. I need to find out all the constituent parts that are required to complete that task, and then do it. If I just think, well, I need to learn Unity, but I don't really know. I, want to just, I just want to know it after a couple of weeks. It's not really feasible. It's always better to kind of you know, think of something to do and then find out what's required to do that. Uh, and that's just the way I work. But what I realized was that the way I was teaching before I came up with you know, the new approach that I'm presenting to you now 
uh, was, was such a method that really was very prescriptive. And I would teach in hour and a half blocks and give people um, instructions throughout the whole time. So I wasn't really giving them uh, an education in, in uh, researching for themselves or kind of querying the kind of knowledge I was giving them. You know, it was a very linear process. So I looked at some kind of pedagogic theory uh, and I looked at the kind of theories that uh, various people have had on uh, ways of learning. So the experiential learning model uh, said that knowledge results from the combination of grasping and transforming experience. Okay, so taking a piece of information in and turning it into something personal that's really important for any student. But the problem with that is that I found is the student learning model, which is how can we be expected to do something if you haven't told us how? You know, so I'm sure, has anybody come across that before in their teaching? This is the point where you all nod and I feel really reassured. Cool, good work, thanks. Okay, so without you know, trying to do our students down or do them a disservice, it is often a problem for a lot of people who are trying to learn, especially a new skill. You know, they, they will take exactly what we've given them and not be able to kind of abstract that information into something different. So there's a school of learning style theory that said that students should be taught in their own preferred style. So they say that there's a, a, a better learning style for every single individual which is fine until you ask a tutor to actually address that theory, whereby you might be dealing with several hundred students. And to actually assess and understand what's best for everyone and try and create teaching material, teaching content, content of a lecture, it's very, very difficult. So I looked at the opposition of that, which is uh, cognitive psychology. David Williams says that what matters is whether students are taught in the contents best modality rather than that of the individual. So looking at what's best about the content or what's special about any particular topic um, and teaching in a way that's appropriate for that. So I gave that a lot of thought and I tried to think of what the modality of games was. I kind of tried to think of what makes games special versus other topics that I teach. So I teach web design, Photoshop, HTML, PHP, various other disciplines. So I thought about games and I thought, well, they're interactive. That's why my students enjoy doing them. That's why they often prefer that to just doing a load of HTML and seeing a rendered web page. You know, it's a lot more exciting. They're collaborative, so a lot of people, you know, prefer to, you know, work together on games. There's multiplayer games, there's one, two, three, four player games. Um, you know, from passing Angry Birds along a line of people all the way up to World of Warcraft. Um, they're addictive, and of course, you know, that's something that really would be great to get into teaching some kind of form of addictive uh, interest in, in what you're teaching to people. Uh, and they're non-linear, so they're not really uh, something that you could accuse of being a very direct part. So there's plenty of games out there where, you know, you could take Mass Effect as an example, not to do down the Mass Effect. Um, you could say it's very linear, so it appears to have, you know, a non-linear element, but ultimately games as a format are a very non-linear thing. So I thought about that some more. And I tried to look at the linear and non-linear, the sort of yin and yang of learning certain things. So uh, I looked at linear methods of, of learning things. So they might be tutorial books, video tutorials, the documentation, and example projects. So I'm not trying to do any particular format down. Um, sorry, I just have to get through this next slide. Cool, that's that done. Okay, so after that you've got non-linear resources. So the forums, Unity Answers, IRC chat channel, and of course me and some of you guys asking a tutor. So we're a nonlinear resource. People can query us, get information back. So what I wanted to see was how much confidence, so going back to that kind of key element I mentioned earlier, those particular categorizations of learning resource would give people. So I did a little bit of research and I asked uh, several hundred Unity developers how long they've been learning for. Sorry, thanks by the way if you did fill in that survey for me. Um, how long they've been learning for, how confident they felt at present, and what methods, based on those categorizations of linear and non-linear, uh, they'd used to learn the software. And what I discovered was that although by about 70% linear methods were a lot more popular, a lot more widely used, because of course in there is software documentation that's essential, um, and all of those other things, the people who <coughs> used non-linear uh, had actually become more confident in a shorter space of time, you know, according to them. So, some of this research is subjective uh, and you could pick holes in it, but they did seem to say that they were a lot more confident when they felt comfortable with querying something and actually asking information uh, of another source rather than just following instructions. 